He told me that racism was fake and that it was made up by social media and institutions. Another party, another Friday night, another talk that might turn into a fight. Too many faces you only see online, too many cases of faking by design. Wake up every morning just to Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about dating apps, which I've never talked about on my channel before, but I just wanted to, you know, talk about dating apps because I think that they're still somewhat controversial and, you know, there's a preference for meeting people naturally, which I think is really great, but I think especially with a pandemic, it's been hard to meet people naturally, especially in person. Um, and dating during the pandemic has just been really strange. So, yeah, I just wanted to share my experience on using dating apps. So I actually first went on dating apps as soon as I was vaccinated. Um, and the reason why I went on dating apps was because, um, you know, I, I started graduate studies uh, here at Stanford um, right when the pandemic was just really so serious. And um, there weren't a lot of people on campus, first of all, and we weren't even able to intermingle with people on campus. Um, and so really the only people I got to hang out with were uh, the 11 other people in my own cohort uh, in my program. And, you know, after hanging out with the same, you know, 11 people uh, <laughs> for about a year, um, I, I just really wanted to meet someone else. And I hadn't dated anyone at all, like, hadn't been on any romantic dates uh, or been in any romantic relationships for about maybe three to four years at that point because I got out of a relationship my senior year of college and then I did two years of work in Baltimore and I knew that I didn't want to stay in Baltimore for a long period of time uh, so I didn't look for anything serious uh, and then I got to campus and it was still the pandemic and so yeah I just spent a year not meeting people romantically uh, and I finally went on dating apps and I went on a few that my friends have been really successful on. Honestly, like most people around me found their significant other through dating apps and so I, I wanted to give them a try. So I first want to show you which dating apps I used and try to compare them. Um, so one of the dating apps I used was one that I've actually been on before. It's called Coffee Meets Bagel. And that app is, um, it's been around for a long time. I used it once when I was in college uh, and I was visiting UCLA uh, as a student researcher. And I actually did um, get into a serious relationship through that app, but we were long distance and things just didn't really work out. Um, and then I never went back on. Um, but I, you know, downloaded that and tried it out. Um, I think it's a little bit outdated now. The interface seems really old to me. Um, but the good thing about Coffee Meets Bagel is that you, um, you only get a certain number of matches per day. Uh, I think you're only shown maybe like 10 profiles a day or something, and you can choose um, from these profiles um, who you like. And I think generally for women it works a little bit differently. Uh, at least from what I remember when I was first on it, I think for women, um, you were only shown people who had already liked you, so you could choose who you wanted to match with right away. Uh, and I think you would only really get like one match a day or something like that. But I think now maybe it's like a couple more a day. You know, I think it's a really good app for people who don't have a ton of time and don't want to be overwhelmed by dating apps because dating apps can be just like endless scrolling through profiles and swiping. I actually tended to match with similar people on Coffee Me's Bagel um, as I did on Hinge, and so I thought they actually had very similar algorithms in terms of matching people. Um, so next I used Hinge, which I thought was the best out of the ones that I used. Um, Hinge uh, is is really interesting for 
I don't know exactly how their algorithm works, but I like that they have different sections so you can like see who's already liked you uh, and you can just go through that pile or you can choose from like people's favorites, so profiles that have received a lot of attention over the past week or so and you can like send them roses if you want. And a rose is um, something that you can pay extra money for, you also get like one free rose a week and you can uh, use that to show someone you really really like them. And of just sending them a like. Um, Hinge is really similar to just normal social media, so I thought it was really similar to Instagram, um, where you can look through pictures and they have like short prompts uh, to sort of allow you to show um, your personality. And then there's also sort of an explore page where you can just go through profiles in your area, and of course they have um, similar settings to any other app. You can choose um, if you like women or men uh, or both. Um, you can choose um, whether certain things are deal breakers, so like generally they'll show age, um, your religion if you have one, what sort of drugs you do, which I thought was interesting. I think that's somewhat of a new feature. Where you live, uh, and then where your hometown is, so where you're from, and your job. I actually ended up only using Hinge for most of my dating because I just thought it, it worked better for me. I liked the pool of people that I saw on Hinge compared to other dating apps. Um, and it, yeah, it just seemed like all of the young professionals are using Hinge these days and it just worked really well. I also used Bumble for a little bit towards the beginning of um, my my dating endeavors, um, but I think there were a few things I didn't like. So one of the things is you can't really see who's liked you so far, um, so you have to do just like sort of endless swiping until you, um, you connect with someone who's already liked you. And um, yeah, I think it really is up to the women on, on Bumble to initiate the conversations. And then um, recently I actually went on a different app, it's a religion-based app called Upward, and I had never heard of it before, uh, and I went on it because, you know, faith is really important, that religion is really important, and spirituality is really important for certain people. And I was just really curious to see um, what type of people I'd find on the app. Um, so I went on it. Um, I personally am Christian, but I um, saw a lot of people on there with, you know, a variety of religions. There were people who were Muslim, people who were, um, you know, Christian like myself, people who were, um, Buddhist, you know, a lot of these different things. And, uh, I thought the pool of people I saw on there were, like, much older than me. Yeah, generally I guess like not the type of people that I would imagine myself with. Um, but it works similarly to Bumble, I think, where you have to, to keep swiping um, and then once you match someone I think it's up to you to, to try to initiate conversation with them. Um, so now I'm going to show you what my profile looks like. So this is my Hinge profile and I currently have it on pause but I unpaused it for a couple of days just to show you um, how people or how men would respond to uh, certain prompts and pictures on my profile. So it has my real name on it, obviously, Eugene. Uh, I use this as my main profile photo. Um, it's one that I took at a winery. <laughs> and okay, so obviously like all, most of these pictures are from before I started bleaching my hair, which was uh, this past summer. And I actually changed this prompt. I think it used to be something like new to the Bay Area was good or something, and I don't think that's really conducive for serious matches. So I changed it to, I'm looking for someone who wants to enter into a serious relationship that could potentially result in marriage, three to five kids, and a lifetime of fun and laughter. I got a lot of really interesting responses to that because, you know, I think generally men my age are not ready for that. Uh, and then it shows my age, uh, my height, yeah, that's also something they show, uh, and then my location, uh, whether you have children or not, and then whether you want children or not, uh, and then whether you're vaccinated, that's something new that they added as well, and then um, whether you drink, whether you smoke, whether you smoke weed, whether you do drugs. Um, so, okay, and then my job, um, my school, it also shows your school, um, where you graduated from, uh, and what sort of degrees you have, um, and then your religion if you have one, and your hometown. Uh, and not all of these need to be shown, I think the only, man the only mandatory ones are your age and your height, uh, and your location. 
It's just this picture of me on a carousel that says don't judge me. I, I think my my prompts and photos are kind of lame, so I'm surprised I ever match with anyone, but yeah. <laughs> And then I have this one photo that I added after I went back on the dating apps. Um, I was only on it for a month uh, when I first went on and then I um, got into a serious relationship with someone and then I got out of that relationship after about six months of dating someone. He was actually another student here and um, we just decided that it, would be it was best to just be friends. But everything is okay and I'm back to dating. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I added this picture um, just to show people that I I had pink hair. <laughs> uh, I'll fall for you if you... Oh god, that's grammatically incorrect. Oh no. I'll fall for you if help me glean fruit from Stanford fruit trees. <laughs> and then guess where this photo was taken? Uh, this is just like a random pink wall corner um, in Busan, actually, in Korea. Uh, my ideal date from home. Actually, I changed a lot of these prompts now that I think about it. But uh, yeah, this one says my ideal date from home would be watching K-dramas over a glass of wine and cuddles. Pre-coffee me. Uh, felt cute, might delete later. I should delete that. Um, so just to show you quickly like how guys generally responded to my prompts, I'll go into actual matches. So these are people who've liked me, who liked me over like two days during winter break. And they show you people who've sent you roses first because those are the people who are most interested in you. Uh, so you can see how they've responded to certain prompts. So this guy responded to my I'm looking for a prompt saying, I want lifetime of fun and laughter. Uh, this guy to my help me glean fruit. I'm a bit too short, but maybe I can give you a boost. Uh, this guy says, hi, Eugen. We're looking for the same thing. Let's get a meal together sometime. Yeah, some guys really like girls who are looking for serious relationships because that's what they're looking for as well. Glean, I'm expert on this subject. That's a strong shared interest. By the way, your name in Japanese means friend. Yeah, um, he has the wrong Chinese characters for my name. This guy to the serious relationship prompt, uh, if we have five kids, that sounds like a lifetime of financial pain. <laughs> but otherwise, that sounds great. Guess we can save money by stealing Stanford fruit. <laughs> Pretty good response. <laughs> Um, that's generally, I think, what a lot of guys said to, to that prompt. They were like, three to five kids is maybe too much, especially for California. Uh, this guy to the watching K-dramas over a glass of wine and cuddles says, Anyang, how is life? Any good K-drama recommendation? Okay, I got this a lot actually as well, this type of response um, in regards to the serious relationship, three to five kids thing. He says, do you also have a big family? Um, I actually don't, I only have one sister, um, but I want a big family, so. Okay, this guy says, to the gleaning fruit prompt, I've only successfully gotten oranges. Uh, this guy, to the K-dramas thing, what kind of K-drama are you watching nowadays? Um, uh, between? Oh, by the way, Merry Christmas. So, to the gleaning fruit prompt, this guy says, hello, yes, hello, I'm your guy. And one of his prompts actually says, I won't shut up about Puerto Rico and my love for fruit trees. So this is probably a really good match. <laughs> uh, to the gleaning fruit prompt, this guy says, first we need to set up a calendar and buy a huge ladder. Realistic guy. Yeah, sometimes I'll get like weird guys. This guy responded to one of my photos and just said Netflix and chill. Did he read like any part of my profile? This guy said, I know it's time to delete Hinge when I match with my sister again. <laughs> Poor guy. This guy says, sounds super fun. Any plans for New Year's Eve? To the gleaning fruit thing says, I love how we have so many fruit trees on campus. Do you have any favorite spots? This guy says, love this. Do you have a favorite K-drama currently? I got a lot of those questions too. This guy's cute, but also, um... 
He says he's a trauma surgeon at OHSU, which is an organ, so I'm not sure why he matched with me. Strange. Yep. Ah, I got this a lot too, about the three to five kids thing. He says, five? Ambitious. This guy says to K-dramas, what's your fave K-drama right now? I'm watching Our Beloved Summer, so cute and funny. This guy says to the serious relationship prompt, sounds amazing, I want the same. Um, this guy to the gleaning fruit prompt says, haha, my family has deaf done this. Nice. Okay, so this guy says in response to the serious relationship thing, I might not be looking for something serious at the moment, but maybe I can be a stop along the way. What K-dramas are you into? <laughs> this guy, in response to the K-dramas, says, as long as it's crash landing on you. To the gleaning fruit, is this a euphemism for get, get the most out of Stanford or literally fruit picking? It's not a euphemism. So just to tell you a little bit about my matching and dating experience, I generally wouldn't really text them a lot on the dating app because I first of all hate texting but also had a really terrible experience with texting and then meeting in real life, which I'll tell you about pretty soon. Um, but yeah, because of that I, you know, would always try to meet them in person um, just as soon as I could um, once matching, when, after I matched with them and could tell that they weren't like a dangerous person. You, some of you might judge me for this but I went on the same date with every single person. Um, so the first date was always, um, I would get them to come to campus and go on a walk with me. Uh, and we would almost always start in the same place and end in the same place. And it would always be about, you know, an hour long. It was really boring going on the same date over and over again every single day. Um, but I think it was really helpful in terms of comparing um, people and, figuring out who was really uh, fun to be with versus who I didn't really connect with. I only really had like a few people um, out of maybe like 30 guys that I really wanted to see again and if I did want to see them again I would generally um, you know ask them out on a second date. Um, this is another thing that I think of some people will judge me on but I also kept like a very detailed list of guys and their like pros and cons, you know, what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them. Um, and I did this because when I first went back on the dating apps, I hadn't dated anyone romantically in years, like three to four years. And I, I really didn't understand like what I wanted in a romantic relationship because I had changed so much um, from my last relationship. So I made like charts <laughs> listing each guy. That's just me. You don't have to do this if you already know what you like and if you have a really good memory for people that you meet. And then in terms of how I decided who I wanted to actually meet in person, I think at first I wasn't super picky about who I met, um, but I think now in terms of dating I know that I prefer dating students because it's just easier, it's just more convenient because you're both on campus, you live right next to each other, you can see each other all the time, you can work together, they understand that you're really busy because they're also really busy. Now I generally don't meet anyone who lives farther than maybe like 20 minutes away from me, 30 minutes away from me because I think it it really you know becomes work to to get to like meet the person for dates and stuff. I don't really have like a major preference for how someone looks as long as I'm attracted to them and I feel like I have really weird standards uh, that generally don't agree with other people's standards uh, but I, I really if there's one thing I really really have to choose one feature that I have to choose that I really need or prefer um, I really need them to have nice eyebrows because I actually don't have eyebrows, these are completely drawn on. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's really nice when a guy has, has pretty eyebrows. So yes, like thick, hairy. So now going into why I don't text on dating apps. So I used to text, but there was this one guy uh, that I texted for about a month and we kept missing each other because we were both traveling at the time, um, but he lived around Stanford. Uh, and he was about 35 years old. You know, on his profile it said that he was the CEO of a company and um, his education said Stanford um, 
and we texted for a month and I thought I really liked the guy and I was really looking forward to meeting him. Mm, then we met up, finally, and it was the worst date I've ever been on. He basically had failed to tell me that he was um, still an undergrad at 35 years old. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I th just thought it was weird that he had never mentioned that he was still an undergrad here. He made it seem like his main job was like being the CEO of a company um, when we were texting. But all that aside, um, basically the reason why it was the worst date ever was because he was really racist. I never really talk about race on my dates with people, especially like the first date, but this guy and I ended up talking about race and uh, he told me that racism was fake and that it was made up by social media and institutions. And he was a white male. He told me that he was really sick of everyone in the Bay Area being a social justice warrior and I basically had to fight with this guy for black people's rights. And then he got really mad at me and texted me afterwards and said that he was really disappointed in me um, for trying to tell him off about racism. So after that I was like, well honestly, like texting doesn't seem to tell you a lot about what the person is like and so I don't really text people anymore. I immediately just say I'm not really into texting on dating apps but I'd love to meet up and, and talk in person if you'd like. Do I have any other like juicy stories? Mm, I did match with this one professor at Stanford. Um, he was one of my first matches on Hinge. We also matched on Coffee Muse Bagel. Uh, and he's really cool. Um, he was in a different department from me, so that was perfectly fine. Uh, he was a fairly young professor. Um, so this video is getting kind of long and I'll just end it on the basic pros and cons of dating apps in my opinion. Um, so I think, you know, the pros are you're meeting up with someone and you don't have to play the game of like, are they single? Are they interested in me? Um, what do they do for a living? Like all of this stuff. Uh, it's just all on a profile and you get to meet so many people outside of your just general environment. If I didn't go on dating apps, I uh, would never be able to meet a lot of people in the area because I'm a student. And I also think it's good for students like me because I've been connected with a lot of other students and have made a lot of connections through dating apps. And you know, I think if you are both looking for something similar, whether it's a casual relationship or a serious relationship, um, I think there's a lot of potential to find something meaningful in through these apps. I think some cons are that you don't really get to know the person as a friend first and you all you know is, is what's on their profile when you first meet them. I think another con about dating apps is that they're very superficial. It's basically like social media. You're just swiping and judging people based on what they look like and um, yeah, based on a lot of surface factors. Um, so it's really hard to tell whether you're going to get along with someone or not. Anyways, um, let me know if you uh, decide to try dating apps yourself um, and how all of that goes. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Change the world, honey. I want it, I'm feeling old. Hey! Being young and engaged in the modern.